morning guys, we're here in Kyoto, Japan, and we're off to maybe the most iconic photo in all of Kyoto, the bamboo forest. And it's one of those spots that I think it's going to be hard to take a unique picture. And it might even be harder because this morning the light looks really bad. But it's one of those classic spots that even if it's a similar photo to what everybody else takes, it's just one of those photos you just need to take. So um, we're hiking that way now. Go, Joe. You gotta test it for us. So according to Google Maps, the bamboo forest is just right around this corner up here. And I guess maybe a little bit, well yeah, definitely bamboo forest here. I think the like classic part is probably just up here. Um, from a photography standpoint, it's not the end of the world when it's dark like this. It's still really, really beautiful. But what an ideal situation is, is just after sunrise, when the light's like smashing through the forest, you get the top of the trees all lit up and it can look really beautiful. But when it's overcast and cloudy like this, you don't get that glow on the top. So a little bit of a shame, but we'll still make something in here. This place is beautiful. Okay, the thing you don't realize about this place is that it's actually just one little strip. There's one tiny strip that is really cool. So even if you wanted to get super creative in here, it would be a challenge. The good news is though, there's some really golden light in the background of this, and I think it'll mesh up really well. So there's a guy that drove his motorcycle in here that's gotta be illegal. It's like a, it's like a walking path, and he's taking some shots of his bike. And other than him, I think we have this place to ourselves. So we're gonna set up tripods and, uh, and grab some images. So we're set up and we're actually getting light here. It's actually perfect. I was complaining this morning, it's perfect. We're getting this really, really nice glowing light on the top and because of the overcastness, it's soft through here, it's not harsh. And the top of the image looks really nice and glowing. Now, to do this shot, um, Jody, for example, came up here, rocked up her camera, and was like, oh, it looks too dark. The scene looks bright, but it is dark because the forest is actually really dark, and the top of the image is really, really bright. So the way you have to counter that is by overexposing your meter by a lot. And doing that, you will get like the bamboo and everything like that will be the right exposure. If you really wanna take it to the next level, add like a three stop grad ND or something like that and it'll really hold in that light at the top of the image. And this is coming out really beautifully. There is really only four or five images at most here shooting that way. But I think we can also like shoot stuff in the forest, some abstract stuff, some detailed stuff. Don't come to a location and think, oh, I've only got one shot to take. As soon as you get your shot with your wide lens, switch to a longer lens and pick out some details. There's always multiple images to be made. For photographers, this is um, this is my bit of advice. Get here really early. It's 6.14, the sun's now been up for 20 minutes. We've been here for about 20 minutes and people have started to roll in. Um, most people roll in pretty quick, take a couple pictures and move, um, but it is getting busy. It's also cherry blossom season, so it's extra busy. But yeah, now there's people here. We got our classic shots and I think now it's time to move on to those detailed shots. But yeah, if you're a photographer, get here early because you literally probably only have 10, 15 minutes until people start rolling through here. Photo number two after the, you know, the classic shot. 
I've got the 50 millimeter on, no filters, nothing, and I'm just shooting straight into the bamboo. It's really important with shots like this to figure out one, depth of field. And sometimes it looks better to be like F16 and get everything in focus. Sometimes it looks better to kind of have something in the foreground. So I'm shooting both of them, and I guess I'll see what looks best later in post-processing. But the most important thing is composition on these shots. If you don't have a nice composition in these detailed shots, if you don't find a balanced image, you don't find something interesting, it's, it's a nothing image. So really, really work on your composition. Composition. One of the tricks that I use in finding composition in details is I literally just throw on the live view on my camera and I kind of just pan around the world to try to see what it looks like because obviously your camera sees different than your eyes do. So I like to look through my camera and I do that using the live view. And I think these photos are coming out pretty cool today. And I think it's now time to, to bail on this location and maybe go get some breakfast and head back to Osaka. So I have to say the trains in Kyoto, like the local trains, and actually this isn't really a local train, it's a private line, non-JR line, that goes all the way to Kobe actually, I think. These trains are awesome. They're kind of like old school looking, and like wood, and yeah, I really like these trains. We're off to meet one of Jody's friends right now, and apparently the place we're going might have 3D lattes again, so maybe another, another latte of my face coming up. We didn't end up getting 3D latte because they were closed. They were closed until 10. There's four things I don't understand in Japan. One, it's really hard to find garbage bins. Two, when you leave the bathrooms, there's only one hand dryer, no matter how many people there are. The third thing I can't remember, but the fourth thing is, coffee shops are never open until 10. Don't people need morning coffee in Japan? Or are they just naturally wired? Um, anyways, we are now catching the train down to, uh, back to Osaka. I just remembered the third thing I don't understand in Japan, and that's why people ride their bikes on the sidewalk instead of the road as somebody walks, drives by on the road. The roads have very few like cars on them in general, and they ride their bikes on the sidewalk, and quite often you spend a lot of time dodging bikes on the sidewalks. That's three. Um, we're heading home right now. We're back in Osaka, and yeah, we're heading home and we're gonna do some work this afternoon. Forgot to film an outro to this video, so uh, yeah, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is just me saying peace. <laughs>